Hello there, this is Battleborn again. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the narcissistic family unit and the tests. The tests that all the people except the scapegoated child within the family are constantly failing and how this impacts the scapegoat and how usually scapegoats think about this uh, throughout their lives and they might even um, think this way into far into adulthood and like I said even throughout their entire lives so what I'm talking about is could be spoken of in a general kind of sense because every day when we uh, when we are in our lives we're constantly tested we have choices in how to respond how to react how to act um, and what to do and what not to do in certain kinds of situations that is a constant in life and, and there is no difference between this and uh, being in a family or even in a narcissistic family so within a narcissistic family there's a lot of bad behavior there's a lot of behavior that shouldn't be going on from the narcissist side but also uh, the people around the narcissist that are adult um, these people are usually called enablers because they are enabling the narcissist's bad behavior, making it possible for the narcissist to behave the way they do. These people are the ones that constantly fail these tests in life. Um, they, are not, they are not responding to the narcissist's bad behavior. Instead, they are opening the door for it. Instead, they are letting it pass. They are not facing up to it. They are not challenging it. They are not doing any of this. But this is what the scapegoat or the scapegoated child have done in the family and it is also usually the main reason for why they are scapegoated is because this individual, this little individual uh, that is a kid is doing the whole job for the rest of the family in this regard. This kid is the one who usually um, speaks up, speaks out, tells the narcissist that you know whatever you you know think is right is not and all these things and then uh, these other people the enablers are getting a free pass they don't have to step up they they could but they don't because they see that well this child is is is, is saying how I feel so I don't need to do it you know so what ends up happening a lot of times for for children that have been scapegoated in a family unit like this is that even when they become adults they fail to see that it wasn't their responsibility to do all of these things. It was not your responsibility if you grew up in a narcissistic family to to speak up and to fight and to 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 basically um, set boundaries for this individual, the narcissist. That was not your responsibility, but you had to do it or you did it because no one else did it. And this is kind of like something that is constant with these families. So this is not going to change. Um, so what you often feel like is that because if you go no contact or if you just cut, uh, uh, go into less contact with your family, you're going to feel like you're not really doing your job because you're not playing your role anymore. You're not being in that constant state of fighting and setting up boundaries for other people, which is extremely unhealthy to think that way that that's your job but also it's unhealthy for other people because they don't need to do it themselves but that's usually what what's going to end up happening when the scapegoat withdraws and the narcissist is going to keep on you know smashing people around them they're just going to do what they like to do you know and it is for other people that's that's a, that's a way of thinking that i think is way more healthy to um to impose into people that have been scapegoats you got to let other people do their um, work. They got to set boundaries with this person now. And some of these people in the family might not be able to do that. They might be overrun time and time again and, and stay with this person. But like I said, it's not your responsibility to set boundaries for other people. And a lot of times it becomes that way in a narcissistic family because there is usually seldom more than one person who does this. You know, so you feel a lot of times that this is what you are supposed to do. And if you are really, if you're not present, there is, there is no 
uh, checks and balances onto the narcissist. So you're kind of like a little bit afraid of when you do pull back, what is going to happen to the other family members? How is this going to look, you know? But that's what I'm saying. That's if these people are adults, that's not your responsibility. It's not. First of all, the narcissist is responsible for how they behave, even though they will never admit to that. And second of all, if the other people around is adult human beings, they might be stuck in childhood wounds and traumas, but still, this is for them to realize. This is for them to fix. And, and it cannot be fixed if you also stand in, in the way for that. Like if you are the scapegoat and you are constantly like taking up the space uh, between the narcissist and these other people so they don't really have to step up you know that's a way of seeing it too uh, and I've talked about that before on this channel when I said that you shouldn't interfere with the narcissist because the narcissist has um, or narcissistic people have a destiny themselves and they need to see their own wrongdoings sometime and if they don't you know um, yeah time is gonna slip and and eventually things are going to be like like it is but it's not for you to change the narcissist's destiny to make them understand that their behavior is wrong that's not your job and that's actually a very toxic could become a very toxic situation uh, if people think like that so basically what has failed in a narcissistic family is the fact that nobody takes responsibility and nobody nobody owns up to their own position you know so uh, the other adults uh, that were maybe the narcissist husband or wife or or uh, uncles and aunts and all these people that were around them failed to do these right things that I talked about like the choices we have every day the the actions we do every day all these things are what makes you you eventually is all these small choices that you do or don't do that will end up creating the path you walk that will end up defining who you are and all of these things and the people around a narcissist who is who is enabling their behavior are failing on doing the right thing first of all they are propping up a, a mentally uh, disordered individual in their delusional way of seeing the world but secondly they are also um they are also failing themselves and 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 the people that is around the narcissist that is younger like the kids that they have with the narcissist and all these things which is a way worse thing to do um so i just want to make this video um try to give people a different view if you are in this kind of situation and you have dealt with it and like i said a lot of times these things linger it's like we think if you ha have been a scapegoated child in a family, you, you might think that this is all this, all this mess is your responsibility. All these things that happen around you is your responsibility. Even the narcissist behavior is your responsibility. The reason sometimes narcissists uh, or narcissistic uh, parents, mothers, will tell you that straight to your face. That the reason I am acting like this is because of you. And if you were not in the family, if you were not present in the family, you know, things would be great here but that's a big lie nothing would change nothing changes ever narcissists will find a new uh, chopping block and they will just basically uh, repeat the same behavior with a new person so never buy into that false notion that um, if people tell you that uh, that's a that's a big red flag by the way if people tell you that the reason I am behaving so badly is because of you that's just somebody that never will take responsibility for their own actions and uh, and also legitimizes uh, being uh, angry or, or toxic or, or gaslighting, um, you know, because of another human being. And that's usually how narcissists talk and that's usually what you will get with them. So, like I said, just want to give people a, a, a help in, in seeing things a little differently because it's not always easy when this has been the only thing that you have been hearing throughout your life. So, thank you for listening in and have a good day.